Hi everyone, Hermano here. In today's video, we are going to install Arch Linux on a laptop with KDE. So let's get started straight away. First thing you want to do is to go to the Arch Linux website and click on download and make sure to download the ISO from the mirror closest to you. Then once you select one, you just select the ISO you want to download and download it. You'll have to burn it on a USB stick and make it bootable and boot your laptop from the stick itself. Once you reach the boot menu, just select Arch Linux installation and you'll be, be good to go. So I've done that already and I installed already my SSH link there so that I can show you the terminal directly here on my screen. And so let's get started. So here I am on the Arch ISO installation. So I have already connected to the Wi-Fi, otherwise I couldn't have logged in with SSH. How I did that? Well, you can do the same. Basically, when you see this prompt here, or we'll just type in Wi-Fi dash menu and hit enter. And the machine will scan for networks. And here you can select your network. And when you click on it, you will be able to enter your password, enter OK, and you will have an IP. I've done that already, so I can hit cancel here. And if I type in now IPA, you can see my IP there is 192.168.178.43. So I'm good to go. I'll clean up the terminal and let's start now with the installation. Now, if you have a US keyboard, you can skip this step, but I don't. So I'll have to actually enter my key map. Otherwise, I'll have a lot of typos here. So I'll do this by typing in load keys. And then basically you'll have to look for your key map. My in this case is te underscore ch dash lighting one and hit enter. And now I'm sure that I, my keyboard is mapped correctly. So I'll clean up the terminal. And now let's synchronize the time with internet as we have internet now available. So we'll do this by typing in time date ctl set dash ntp true and hit enter and there you go so now we come to the disk partitioning so this is a ufi system so i want to actually partition the disk in three parts i will need a boot partition a home partition and a swap partition so i'll type in now shortly lsbrk as you can see already, my drive is already partitioned in three. I have a 512, a 32 gigabytes, and a 433 gigabytes partitions on the disk. So I'll need to delete those first, otherwise I won't be able to partition how I want to. So let me do this by typing in fdisk and the name of the device, which is in this case is dev nvme0n1, nvme0n1. That's a long name, and hit enter. And now I want to delete the partitions here, so I'll type in D. Partition number three, yes, is the one for 430 gigabytes. Yes, I want to delete that, so I'll hit enter. And again, I'll hit D and hit enter again. And I'll delete partition number two and hit enter. And again, D, enter. And partition one has been deleted. Now I have to write these changes to the disk, so I'll type in W and hit enter. And I'll clean up the terminal. And now I'll type in again LSBRK. As you can see, the disk is now clean and we can start the partitioning. So let's do that again by typing in FDisk and the name of the device and hit enter. So I'll write a GPT partition label by typing in G and hit enter. Now I want to create the first partition and that's going to be for the EFI. So I'm going to type in N for new. Partition number, default is one, I accept that. So I'll just hit enter. First sector, I have no other choice to accept the default here. So I'll accept that and hit enter. For the last sector, I want this partition to be 512 megabytes. So I'll write in here plus 512 capital M and hit enter. And as you see, partition one has a VFAT signature. Remove it, yes, for now, because we are going to mount the file system later. So I'll type Y and hit enter. And now let's move on to the second partition, which is going to be our swap partition. And I'll type in now N for new. 
partition number 2 is default, that's ok, I'll hit enter. I'll accept the default for the first sector and hit enter. And I want to be the swap partition to be the double of my RAM, which is 16 gigabytes. So I'm going to do this for 32 gigabytes. I'm going to type in plus 32 and capital G. You'll have to adjust this accordingly to your laptop specifications. And hit enter. And yes, I want to remove the signatures. So I'll type in Y and hit enter. And now let's create the third partition by typing in N for new and hit enter. Default number three is fine, so I'll hit enter here. Default sector is also fine and hit enter again to accept the default. As I said, I want to use the rest of the space. So I'll just hit enter and yes, remove the signature and hit enter again. And there you go. Now we need to write these changes to the disk. So let's type in W and hit enter. And there you go. So I'll again clean up the terminal and type in again LSBLK. And as you can see, we have our partitions there again. Now we need to format these partitions in order to use them. So let's start by formatting our home partition, which is the third one. So let's do this by typing in MKFS, make file system. Dot, I'm going to use the XT4 file system here, EXT4. And the device name, which is slash dev slash NVMe 0N1P3 and hit enter. There you go. So now clean up the terminal again and pull up SBK so that we have the partitions over there. Now I want to make the swap partition here on partition number two. So let's do this by typing in MK swap. And then the device name, so dev-nvme0n1p2 in this case, and hit enter. And now we have to activate the swap by typing in swap on. And again, the device name, so dev-nvme0n1p2, and hit enter. We are going to mount the EFI partition a little bit later in the installation. So now that we formatted the partition, we need to mount our home directory so that we can install the packages later. So let's do this by typing in mount. The partition name in this case is dev nvme0n1p3. And we're going to mount this on the mount directory. So slash mount and hit enter. All right, now that we mounted the third partition on the home directory, we can install the base packages. So let's do this by typing in packstrap. We will install it on the mount directory. And the packages we are going to install right now are base, Linux, and Linux firmware. And hit enter. So it's going to take a moment here to download and install everything, and I'll be back when it's done. So there you go. Let me clean up the terminal. So now we need to generate the fstab file. So we'll do this by typing in gen fstab, capital U, on the mount directory, of course. And we'll append the results to this file on the mount directory, etsy, fstab file, and hit enter. Clean up the terminal. Now, if we output the content of the FS type file on the terminal, we'll see what's in there. Let's do this by typing in cat mount etsy fs tab and hit enter. And as you can see, we have the third partition, our home partition, xt4 file type, and the swap partition in there. So everything looks fine. Let me clean up the terminal again and we'll move on to the next step, which is to move into the installation itself. So we'll do this by typing in arch dash root in the mount directory and hit enter. And as you can see, the login prompt now changed. We are now in the installation and we can configure now the time zone by typing in ln dash sf and that's in the user share slash zone info. And in my case, it's going to be Europe and the city is going to be Zurich in my case and this is going to be in the etsy and local time and hit enter 
Now we are going to synchronize the hardware clock to the system clock by typing in HW clock dash dash sys to HC and hit enter clean up the terminal. We need to edit some files here. Before we can do this, we need to also install an editor. And let's do this by typing in pacman-s. I will install nano in this case, so I'll just type in nano and hit enter. Yes, it's proceeded with installation. And there you go, so I'll clean up the terminal. And now we can edit the locale.gen file, which will be used to generate the locales. So let's do this by typing in nano slash etsy slash locale.gen and hit enter. And I'm going to scroll down with the arrow here to my locale. The one I want to select is English US, which is this one with UTF-8. So I'm going to delete the hashtag here and then hit Control O and enter to save the file and Control X to exit the editor. Now we can generate the locales by typing in locale-gen and hit enter. Now we need to also edit the locale.conf file. So let's do this by typing in nano, etsy, locale.conf, and hit enter. And we'll put in here this string, lang for language, equal, and our locales. So in this case, english underscore us dot utf dash eight. And control O and enter to save the file, control X to exit the editor. Now we need to edit the hostname as well. So let's do this by typing in nano, etsy, hostname, and hit enter. I'm going to call my machine arch and then hit control O and enter to save the file, control X to exit the editor. And now we need to also edit the hosts file. So let's do this by typing in nano, etsy, and hosts, and hit enter. Scroll down to the empty space here and type in these values 127.0.0.1 tab localhost and then double colon, double colon one tab tab and localhost again. And the last entry is going to be 127.0.1.1 tab hostname, in this case arch dot local domain. Tap, and then hostname again, which is in my case Arch. So you're going to replace these depending on what you choose before. Then Control O and Enter to save the file. Control X to exit the editor. Now let's set up the password for this root user. So let's do this by typing in pass W and hit Enter. Enter my new password. And I clean up the terminal here. So now we are ready to install the bootloader grub and also other packages which will be useful to manage the network. So I'll do this by typing in pacman dash capital S and then these packages here. So take a moment, pause the video if you need to so that you can type them in correctly. I'll just go quickly through them. We have grub, the boot manager. We have the EFI boot manager as well, which we need to configure grub. We have network manager, network manager applet, VPS applicant, wireless tool. These are all network tools, of course. Uh, we have OpenSSH, which I will need in order to log in with SSH again. We have the development tool, which has packages I'll always need. Linux adders, the same thing. Dialog is also a network tool. OS Prober also, mTools and DOS apps tools. And when you're ready, just hit enter. And accept the default here by hitting enter again. And proceed with installation, I hit enter. And now it's going to take a moment here to install everything. So I'll be back when it's done. So there you go, I'm going to clean up the terminal now. Before we can install the bootloader, we still need to partition the EFI partition and mount it accordingly. So let's do that first by typing in mkfs.fat and I'm going to write in here dash f32 as I want an, a FAT32 partition. And the device is dev slash nvme 0n1p1. That's the first partition where the EFI will be. And I'll hit enter, clean up the terminal. And now we need to boot this partition into the EFI directory, which we don't have yet. So let's create that by typing in mkdir. I'll type in boot slash EFI and hit enter. 
And now we can mount this partition on the EFI directory. So let's do this by typing in mount dev nv me 0 and one p one We'll mount it on the boot slash EFI directory and hit enter. And now I'll type in lsbk again. As you can see, we have the first partition in the EFI directory. We have our swap partition and our home partition there. So now we need to install grub. So let's do this by typing in grub dash install dash dash target equal x86 underscore 64 dash EFI dash dash EFI dash directory equal boot EFI paste dash dash bootloader dash ID equal grub and hit enter. There you go. Now we need to generate the grub configuration file. So we'll do this by typing in grub dash mk config dash o boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg and hit enter. Now I'll exit the installation by typing in exit. And let's unmount all the partitions by typing in umount dash a and hit enter. And target is busy, that's fine. We don't have to worry about that. So now what I'm going to do is to reboot the system by typing in reboot. And my laptop is going to reboot and I'm going to have to log in again with SSH. So I'll be back once the installation is up and running again. So I'll type in reboot and I'll see you in a bit. So here I'm back in the installation. I type in shortly here IPA. And as you can see, I have an IP here on my Wi-Fi 192.168.178.35. So to configure that, I started Network Manager by typing in system CTL start network manager and hit enter. The second thing you can do is then to type in NMTUI and hit enter. And here you can activate a connection, select your Wi-Fi, put the password in and connect to it. Once you're done, you'll just hit back here and type quit and you will have Wi-Fi up and running. So I clean up the terminal. One last step I need to do still, it's to enable network manager so that it will start automatically the next time. So I'll type in system CTL enable network manager and hit enter and there you go so i'll check my ip again and it, we are good to go clean up the terminal and before we proceed with the desktop installation we'll have to add a new user so we'll do this by typing in user add dash m dash capital g the wheel group, the famous wheel group, this has to do with the sudo, we'll change this later. And the name of the user, in my case, Hermano, and hit enter. Now let's create a password for Hermano, so we'll type in pass w, d, Hermano, and hit enter, and my password. I retype it, and there you go. Now we need to give Hermano pseudo powers. So to do this, I'll type editor equal nano v sudo and hit enter. And then I want to scroll down with the arrow until I found the wheel group. And I want to uncomment to allow members of the group wheel to execute any command. So I need to uncomment this line here and I'll hit control O and enter to save the file. Control X to exit the editor. Now we can proceed to the installation of the desktop environment. So installing the desktop environment consists of three steps. One, installing the display server. Two, installing the display manager. And three, installing the desktop environment itself. So as a display server here, we're going to install Xorg. And we're going to do this by typing in pacman-s xorg-server. And hit enter. Proceed with installation, hit enter. There you go. Now clean up the terminal. 
Now we need to install the Display Manager. The Display Manager for KDE is SDDM, so we'll do this by typing in pacman s space sddm and hit enter. Accept the installation, hit enter again. Let's take a moment here to download and install. There you go. Now I can up the terminal and now I need to enable sddm so that it's going to be automatically started. So I'll type in here system ctl enable sddm and hit enter. Now we can install KDE. So we have two packages here basically we need to install. One is the Plasma package or better said the Plasma group and the other one is the KDE applications. So I'm going to do this by typing in pacman dash capital S Plasma and KDE dash applications. Then hit enter. Accept the default by hitting enter. Again, default by hitting enter and default again to hit enter and default again. So I'll hit enter and I'll hit enter again. Proceed with installation. As you can see, it's quite a lot here. So it's going to take a while and I will be back when it's done. There you go. So the desktop environment is installed. So I'm going to type in reboot here. And if everything went well, I'll see you on the laptop with KDE. So I'll type in reboot and I'll see you in a moment. So there you go, guys. We are in KDE. The installation worked perfectly. Um, the first thing I want to do here is pull up the terminal and check for updates with my username so that I can see if the sudo works. And so I'll type in sudo pacman s yyu and hit enter and my password. And I can check all right and there's nothing to do. Packages are up to date. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, make sure you like it by clicking the like button below and subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of future videos. And if there's anything specific you want me to cover or you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.